Good day, and welcome to another Com Solutions Tech Tip. Today, we are going to provision an Aruba remote access point. My name is Bill Carr. I am the Chief Mobility Architect at Com Solutions. And for those who are unfamiliar with the Aruba remote access point technology, the remote access points uh, provide you the ability to extend your wired and wireless LAN infrastructure to a remote location, such as a home or a small office, and provide the exact same user experience for the users that are working from home or a small branch office as they would have at your corporate site. Today we're going to talk about an Aruba Remote Access Point 2. What we have here is the Remote Access Point 2, small unit with an 802.11g radio. And we have two cables connected to it today. On port E0 is the orange cable, which goes to our home network or broad broadband at our branch site. And the green cable, plugged into E1, is currently plugged into my laptop so that we can provision this remote access point. One of the first things that we have to do is make sure that our network administrator has been provided with the MAC address of this particular remote access point so they can uh, whitelist this device, which authorizes it to gain access to our corporate network. So now we're going to go onto our Aruba controller and verify that this uh, remote AP has been uh, provisioned to get onto our network. And here's the MAC address. It's been provisioned into this remote AP group. And now we'll actually go through the process of provisioning it. After the Aruba wrap boots up and we have a valid link light on both E0 and E1, um, if we open a web browser, we'll get redirected to wrapconsole.arubanetworks.com. And we can then simply provision the uh, access point to phone home. In this case, we're going to contact the controller at Com Solutions, where it's been authorized. And then the AP will actually go through the process of validating that it can connect to the internet that it can gain access to the controller, that it's authorized. And also through that process, it will also uh, validate the version, software version, and automatically update the remote AP's firmware image if it's necessary. Now, while the remote AP is actually going through the process of doing the upgrading, we can validate this status on the controller, where we'll actually see this remote AP has registered, it's on the controller, and it's in the process of doing an image upgrade. We also get indication on the remote AP provisioning page that the AP is in the process of rebooting. So now we can actually go back into our controller and we can see that our AP is now back up and running and providing services to our users. Uh, let's see if we have, um, if we check on the remote AP console. And if we look now on the remote AP console, we can actually see that our wired ports are up and our wireless SSIDs are up and running. We have a wired user, which happens to be my laptop, plugged in behind it, getting an IP address from our office DHCP pool. And realistically, that's uh, the end of our tech tip. That is as simple as it is to provide and provision a remote access point for a home user. Thank you again for watching. If you have any questions, please visit our website at www.comsolutions.com. Stay tuned for more tech tip videos.